If you want to see what's new in the latest Photoshop 2026, that is version 27, yeah, a bit confusing. I'm gonna show you what is useful and what is actually not. So let's dive in. All right, the first feature that is the partner models of the generated fill. So if you go into Photoshop and for instance, we want to make something with generated fill, I would go to generated fill. Let me put this here and I will select a partner. So usually we would have Adobe models like Firefly Image 1, Firefly Image 3, but now we also have partner models. And you can find a lot of these videos on these partner models. These are really better than the Firefly, at least I think they are, especially Gemini 2.5 Nano Banana. That is a really good one. When you try to create something with generator fill, definitely try those out. Those work a lot better than Firefly, at least for me they did. So let's say I wanna create the fox in the forest and I would select Nano Banana and look at that, that looks pretty good. It still looks AI, but I think this is a lot better than Firefly. At least I don't use Firefly. The next feature is the generative upscale now has a partner model. That means that if you want to upscale something, let's go into Photoshop and let's say I want to upscale a photo. So let's say I have this photo and I want to upscale this. You would go to image and select generative upscale. Here you can upscale your image. In the generative upscale, we can select from different models. And usually we would only have these Adobe models, Firefly upscaler. I tried this one out in a previous video and I didn't like the results at all. So I'm glad they added a partner model and that is Topaz. We have Topaz now. And Topaz is probably one of the most popular ones, if not the popular one for upscaling images. And that is for a reason they are pretty good at upscaling images. So you can select from Topaz Gigapixel. This is a good one to upscale your images or you can select from Topaz Bloom. But remember, if you're gonna use Topaz Bloom, it's gonna use AI to upscale your image. So you're not gonna get an original image anymore. It's gonna be AI generated. So make sure to check that. Recently, Topaz moved to a monthly subscription. A lot of people didn't like that but now you can use Topaz inside Photoshop, but in Photoshop, you also need credit. So if you have Topaz, if you have a subscription or you just paid for the software, I think you can still use it. But if you're gonna use it in Photoshop, you're gonna need those credits. I think it costs like 10 or 20 credits for each generation, so it's really limited. I have other options if you want to have an upscaler without monthly credits. Check the link in the description of the video. I have another tool that doesn't require monthly credits or anything like that, no subscriptions. It's just a one-time payment and then you can use it unlimited. Now the next feature that is added into Photoshop that is Harmonize. With Harmonize you can basically create digital artworks without doing the blending kind of thing in Photoshop. So let's say I have this photo of this road and I have this photo of this car and I want to move the car to this photo. So let's go to the car then I'm going to go to select subject it's gonna make a selection of my car here. And let's just make a mask. And then I will drag this in the new file. And let's just resize it with Ctrl T. Let's say I'm gonna put it there. Just make sure the perspective of your image is a bit right. Then press right mouse and we can click on Harmonize. And this is gonna blend these images together. So it's gonna change the lighting, it's gonna change the colors, and it's gonna add some shadows. So I will do this manually. I'm not a big fan of this. I think it works for maybe small images like butterflies in the background to kind of blend them in your images, maybe some birds or something like that. But for big things like this, I wouldn't use it. I would do this manually and you can learn all this stuff by just practicing a lot. All right, so look at that. It's not bad, but I think if you would do this manually, you would get better result. If I zoom in here, you can see the windows are still the same. You can see those trees in the background. Let me watch another one. Let's say this one. This one looks weird. I don't like this one at all. And this one, I think the first one was the best one, but I think if you do this manually, it will still be better. I think for a quick design, this could be fine, but it doesn't work on all photos. For this one, I think it is okay. The next feature is that you can add Adobe stock assets directly in Photoshop. So if I go into Photoshop, let me create a new file here. When you look at this window here, you can see add free stock images. When I click on that one, I can browse through all these stock images from Adobe. So this is pretty handy if you want to have some images in your design. Let's say I'm gonna have a dog here. I will just search for dog and then I get almost 9,000 results for dog. So that's a big library. And then you just click on one, click on add and I have this in my composite. 
and I can resize this. When I click on enter, you can see this icon here. This means this is a smart object, so I could resize it, make it bigger without losing the quality. Another new feature is that you can now apply color and vibrance adjustments non-destructively. So you can fine tune temperature, tint, vibrance, and saturation with a adjustment layer. Let's say I wanna change the tint of this photo. I would go to color and vibrance. You can see it here at the top. And then we have the temperature slider and the tint slider. Usually we would only have vibrance and saturation, but now we can also change the temperature here. So let's say I wanna change the temperature from this a little bit and also the tint, I can do that here. And the good thing about this is it's non-destructively. So if I disable this layer, it's not gonna do anything. It's just gonna remove this effect again. So I think this is pretty good if you do a lot of photography and you wanna do some changes to your temperature or tint, you can do that easily with these sliders. Another thing that is upgraded, that is the select and subject. If you're gonna select a subject inside Photoshop, it now works faster and better. So let's say I want to remove the background from this photo, I would go to select and I will select subject. And now it's using the cloud to select the subject and look at that, when I create a mask, it makes a pretty good selection of this bird. Although this is a difficult image, the bird is moving in the air, so I can imagine this is not an easy image to process, but I've tried this out on different images and it works really good. So if you create digital art, usually you would go and use the pen tool to kind of make a selection of your subject, get rid of the background, but now you can do this automatically and usually it works out pretty good. So I'm happy they improved this. Another new feature is that now you can access templates directly in Photoshop. So if I go to the home screen of Photoshop, on the left side, you can see we have templates. This is for Adobe Express. That means that it's working in the web. So it's not really inside Photoshop, it's in the web. But if you're lazy to learn Photoshop, or you just wanna have a quick template like a social post, you can just browse through these templates here. And when you pick one, just click on it and click on edit in Adobe Express. And there you can quickly just create something like in Photoshop, but on the web. So Adobe Express. So here you can change your text or something else. You can change the photo, etc., and you're pretty fast done. So for some people, this is pretty good because they don't have to learn Photoshop. They can do this easily with templates that it's done for them. Another new thing in Photoshop that is projects. If you work with other people on a project, let's say you want to go to the homepage here of Photoshop, you can see here we have projects and there you can save a project. So this could be Photoshop documents, but also Illustrator files. You can also save and export your Photoshop assets to the cloud. So if you work on a computer, maybe on your telephone or your iPad or whatever, you can save it in the cloud and you can easily access all those files from different locations. So that's pretty useful if you work with different machines. I usually only work on my laptop, so I don't need that feature. If you work with different machines, can be pretty useful. You can now also import and edit Firefly generated images. So if you work with Firefly, you can easily import those into Photoshop. So at the homepage of Photoshop, you would have here Firefly generated images. I don't have it because I didn't use Firefly, but if you have it, you will probably see here Firefly generated images and there you can edit your Firefly images. And the good thing about this is that it's non-destructive. So it's gonna keep the original Firefly generated images. And if you add something to it inside Photoshop, it's gonna be a different file. There are some more new features like Firefly has video now. So you could basically use your Photoshop design to generate an AI video with Firefly. So that is pretty much it. Those are the new features of Photoshop. Let me know in the comments which feature you like most and I will catch you on the next video.